Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us here on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio on this Tuesday afternoon here in Austin. So we have a story that just went up on our website a few moments ago, and it's from our, one of our members of our investigative team. And here's the headline right here. Texas mom waits months for camera and daughter's special education class. This is an update to an investigation that our investigative reporter Kelly Wiley brought us, and she's joining us now for an more in-depth discussion about what she's unfolded today in this investigation. So, Kelly, thank you for being here yet again. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I love coming on. I am so glad you're here to talk uh, more about your story that will be airing later tonight on KXAN News at 10, and we'll have more about that in just a moment. But let's lay the groundwork for what we're talking about here. You spoke to two parents of uh, children with special needs, and they're seeking something specific from their school districts. What is it exactly? So they're wanting to have cameras in their children's special education classes. Both of the parents that I spoke to have children who have autism. Both of them have children who are nonverbal, which basically means they have a, a they are not able to communicate. Uh, the one mom that we talked to. Uh, for this story, her daughter is nine years old. She goes to an elementary school in at Houston, within Houston ISD, and her daughter struggles to tell her mom about her day. Her she struggles to even repeat and describe things that she's seeing. So you have to imagine for this parent, it's really important that there be additional layers of transparency. Um, we said in this story, we called it Faith's voice, is what essentially these cameras would be. If something mm -hmm. went wrong, her mom wants to be able to look back and and have some kind of safeguard there. And here's a photo of a very cute Faith there that will be featured in your story and her yes. parents. Um, remind us what the law is here in Texas when it comes to placing cameras specifically in special education classrooms. So the law in Texas right now, it's uh, it was called Senate Bill 507 when lawmakers were taking a look at this and voting on it. But essentially, it allows for parents of special, uh, of students with special needs, specifically students who spend half of their day in one special education classroom. And it also allows school board members and school staff to request a camera in a classroom, a special education classroom. But there are some specific stipulations to that. If a board member or a parent or a school staff member is requesting a camera, the classroom itself has to have half of the student body in that classroom spend half of their day in that special education classroom. And then additionally, if you're the parent that's requesting that camera, your child has to spend half their day in that special education classroom. So there are many specifics to that law, and I'm glad right. that you kind of spelled those out for them. And if anybody out there has any questions about it, we have more in-depth reporting in Kelly's story that we just showed you a few moments ago with that headline. But what is the argument for placing cameras in special education classrooms? You touched on this a moment ago, but I just wanted to really pinpoint on that. Sure. The lawmakers even that we spoke to for this story highlighted things that happened that led up to this discussion happening and them passing this law. This is supposed to be an additional barrier of, of transparency for those kids who cannot communicate. A lot of the students that may be in this class are nonverbal or have limited speech, which for these parents, we talked to a ton of parents for this story. It's so important for them to be able to know if there was any sort of abuse that happened, if there was, uh, if the kid comes home with a bruise on their arm, that they're able to go back and figure out what happened there. And additionally, when we were actually going through the requests that have gone to a lot of these school districts within Central Texas, there are a lot of teachers and principals that are also requesting this additional transparency because it helps them too, right? Things happen at school. Um, we have amazing teachers uh, within Texas that, especially within our special education departments, and it's just a vulnerable population. And so within these requests, there were a lot of, uh, from parents and from school staff who are also wanting that additional transparency there. This issue came up recently in a court case that you covered extensively up in Williamson County. Remind us what that case involved and, and what happened there. For 
a week, we were in a trial in, in Williamson County, and this was about a Hutto ISD um, director of special education who had been accused, along with a, another district employee, of assault, of unlawful restraint, um, and of failing to report this in the in the proper way on some government documents. That case ended in a mistrial, and we're still following how this will all shake out. The jury was split down the middle on um, all of the charges that this, that this uh, employee was facing, but it brought up a lot of questions about, was this captured? Was there video of it? And I, I was, surprised to hear that there were no cameras in any of the special education classrooms at that time. Uh, there was only a little bit of hallway video that caught the student going from classroom to classroom. And when we reached out to the district about, you know, are there cameras in there now? It had been several years since that incident happened. And obviously this ended in a criminal trial. And the district's response was no parent had requested the camera be put in since. When we talked to advocates about that, their response was, well, hold on. It's not just parents that can request these cameras. The school board can request them be put in. Other school staff can be put in, um, can request it be put in. So uh, that kind of sparked us with trying to uh, request different records from different school districts to get an idea of, since this law has passed, how has it been executed? One aspect of your investigation that's going to be airing a little later tonight, again, as we mentioned that, is about changes or reforms to the state law. What have you learned from lawmakers about how this law could potentially change in the future? Right. Well, it's important to have a little bit of a history lesson on this because before they passed the current law, there was a proposal by our now Lieutenant Governor, Dan Patrick, for a law that actually put the burden on the school districts and not the parents or the school staff to request the cameras. That law, the proposal there was for school districts to proactively identify all of the special education classrooms that qualified to have a camera and then proactively put them in. So instead of parents or school staff saying, hey, can you put this in and the school district having to vet that, school districts would have already established which classrooms met that requirement and put them in. But one thing to point out, even then back in 2013 when they were considering this law, this bill that did not pass, they were estimating it would take $2.2 million for them to put these cameras in. So when we spoke to, um, when we spoke to lawmakers and specifically uh, when we talked to them, they brought up, or the specific lawmaker that we talked to brought up that she felt lawmakers should figure out where to find the funds to actually help school districts implement this law. She mentioned wanting to avoid any sort of unfan unfunded mandate for the school districts to have to figure out on the back end. Let's listen to a soundbite that you sent me from State Representative Donna Howard, who will be featured in your story about changes that she sees in this law here in Texas. Take a listen. This is absolutely a place that I think we should be requiring and we should not have to put the burden on the parents to request it. And there you hear, Kelly, again, what you mentioned about that specific kind of subset of this law in making parents the ones that have to ask for a camera to be placed in a classroom. Right. And what's it's so interesting, there are a lot of trends that you see in the records. We just pulled records for districts in Central Texas, and not all of them got back to us with, with their records, but of the requests that we saw, there are a couple of trends. One, for instance, even when these requests for cameras are getting approved, it can take a while for them actually to be put in months, in fact, it can take for these cameras to be put in. And not always for nefarious reasons. Sometimes it can be a matter of finding the proper equipment. Sometimes, you know, it can be an older school that they have to figure out how to get the technology to cooperate. Um, we saw some requests that were delayed because we were in a pandemic and students weren't actually in the school building. So that's one end of it that can be problematic. The other end of it, especially for parents, can be the criteria that's set for the classrooms themselves, right? They can have a student who it spends half their day in a special education classroom who is nonverbal, and they qualify in that way, but the classroom itself doesn't meet the criteria. So it leaves parents in a, in a difficult spot where they're trying to push through and get these cameras placed but meeting roadblocks. 
Definitely a complicated process for sure, but give us a sense about kind of the uh, scope of your story this evening that will air tonight on KXAN News at 10. Well, tonight we're following a family, a Faith's family, and their attempts to get a camera placed in her classroom. And then we're also talking to lawmakers um, and advocates about why the current law in place uh, creates obstacles for families um, and why um, it, it, it's a problem for those families, especially who have nonverbal students who cannot speak for themselves. Investigator Kelly Wiley here in the KXA and live studio. Thank you for your reporting and for joining us for this conversation. And we look forward to your story tonight on KXA News at 10. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. If you'd like to read Kelly's story, it is available right now on KXAN.com. You can also access it on the KXAN News mobile app that you can download onto your smartphone. Please do so if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for joining us. I'm Will Dupree in the KXAN live studio. We'll see you back here another time, everybody. Please stay safe and healthy out there and take care.